Hey guys, um, this week we're going to be talking about reptiles, the characteristics of reptiles, and some different diverse groups. Again, you're going to have a rep Minnesota reptile slides quiz. Um, that'll be later next week, so identifying those. They can be a little tricky, especially the snakes. Um, and then there's a Turtle Power article with some questions, again, pretty easy. Um, it's from the DNR website. So the other thing, don't forget about your field guides for this week. Um, they'll be due on Friday. So um, so back to the notes. We're going to go through these here quickly, hopefully quickly. All right, so we're first going to talk about different um, characteristics that all reptiles share. Um, let me go back here for a second. Um, so if you kind of remember, um, up till this point, we have animals that have moved on to land um, are amphibians, but they need to stay tied to the water to reproduce, um, most of them. So um, we, with reptiles, have an adaptation where reptiles don't need to stay close to the water to reproduce. So it kind of gives them more possible habitats and um, different niches that they can fill. So um, some adaptations for living on land. There's skin. It's thick and scaly. If you've ever felt a snake, you know, they have like little scales on them. Um, as they grow, they molt their outer skin. They used to have a really cool snake skin, um, but my dog ate it. So, uh, Lots of different colors. A lot of times these bright colors mean that they're, they're poisonous or venomous. Um, but sometimes they're kind of fake. This mimicry means that they, they are colored like a venomous snake, but they themselves are not. So it's kind of a way to fake them out. F fake out predators. Um, their support and movement. They have a lot more bones. This is the skeleton of a snake. Um, I've done a snake dissection before. It's not that fun because of all of these bones. There's just so many. Um, but those vertebrae allow for complex movements. Um, some lizards can actually lose their tails and we'll regenerate them later and we'll talk about that in a bit. So most reptiles are carnivores. Some of them will have sticky tongues like chameleons. Um, snake jaws can actually unhinge and spread apart to eat large prey, so prey that's larger than their mouth basically. Um, and then their teeth will point backwards to prevent prey from escaping. Um, sometimes animals are still alive as they're being swallowed, which is not the way I would want to go. That sounds horrible. Um, they have three chambered hearts, so two atria and one ventricle. If you remember the atria collect the blood, um, the ventricle pumps it to the body. So what happens is you have oxygen poor blood but coming back from the body. It enters the right atrium drops down into the ventricle, which is then pumped to the lungs, where it picks up oxygen, comes back to the left atrium, and then down into the ventricle, and then to the body. So there's mixing between this oxygen-rich and oxygen-poor blood, which is not as efficient as if it was unmixed. So um, I'll, I'll tell you an adaptation later on that crocodiles have that kind of help prevent that, but um, the lungs provide a large surface area for gas exchange. There's less loss of water there. So here's a picture of a three-chambered heart for amphibians. Um, some reptiles have what this like septum in here, and or a partial septum I should say, so a partial partition. Um, that helps prevent mixing of blood, whereas your amphibians and some reptiles too have um, full mixing of blood. Four-chambered heart that mammals have and birds has a full partition between um, oxygenated or oxygen-rich and oxygen-poor blood. Um, reptiles are cold-blooded or ectotherms, just like amphibians, so um, this is really important for them. 
they have to uh, either use the environment or adapt in some way to uh, to be able to withstand these different temperature extremes. So uh, we have a lot of reptiles in Minnesota. They have to hibernate in the winter during the cold months, and they usually hibernate in a big group. Sorry, that keeps popping up. Um, so they hibernate in this big group to help keep warm. Um, but they also will use the environment. They'll bask in the sun, um, especially on warm rocks. They'll sit on there as well. Um, reptiles have larger brains than amphibians, better sense of smell, vision, and muscle coordination. So they have a lot. Um, I mean, their brains are larger, but they have certain parts that are more developed than amphibians. Uh, they have ears that detect underground and airborne vibrations. Um, the Jacobson's organs are in snakes. Um, there are these two little holes kind of on their snout where, no, not, it's in their mouth, I think, that they, when they flick out their tongue, they collect molecules from the air to smell. Um, but they put it into those Jacobson's organs to interpret it. And I'll show you that later on. And the tongues can taste chemicals in the air. Yeah, I guess I'll show it here. So they go in here. Okay. Um, they have kidneys that filter the blood with little water loss, which they, that's important. So that helps them stay on la land. Um, they excrete uric acid, which is has very little water in it, so their um, waste is actually kind of a paste almost. Um, there's not a lot of water in it to help keep them hydrated. They have a shelled amniotic egg that does not need to be laid in the water. Um, usually what reptiles do is they'll bury their, they'll kind of dig out a hole and bury their eggs um, in there. Um, most don't provide parental care for their young, so they'll um, lay their eggs and then they, they leave. Uh, there's usually a fairly long development in the eggs, so they, when they do, because there's no parental care, when they um, hatch out, they should be able to survive on their own. So there's a good development there. Uh, there's internal fertilization um, of the eggs because we don't, they don't um, have to reproduce in the water, so the eggs have to be fertilized internally. And some of them will have different courtship behaviors, which mating to find a mate, basically. Here's an amniotic egg. So they have a leathery, hard, hardish, leathery skin or shell. Here's your embryo. Um, the amnion kind of encircles the embryo. Um, there's a yolk sac here that provides food for the developing embryo. The allantois and the chorion kind, kind of help um, store waste from that developing embryo. All right, so different types of reptiles. We have 8,000 species worldwide. That includes snakes, lizards, turtles, alligators, and tuataras, which we'll talk about. You maybe have never heard of those before. Um, they're extremely successful throughout Earth's history. Um, in fact, you know, thinking back to the dinosaurs, they were the most um, prevalent type of animal on Earth at that time. They're the first vertebrates not tied to water, even for reproduction. So turtles, there's about 300 species. They have a shell for protection, and actually, you can't, uh, a, can a turtle can't leave its own shell without dying because the vertebrae are actually fused into the shell. Um, it, yeah, they wouldn't be able to survive without it. They eat insects, worms, fish, some vegetation. They don't have teeth, although some of them have like, I guess a beak almost, a sharp beak. Um, they'll bury their eggs in the ground. Difference between these three, tortoises are terrestrial, so anything that lives on land. So I always think of like the Galapagos tortoise. Terrapins are freshwater. And turtles are marine. I love sea turtles. We saw one in Mexico. It was so cool. Here's a snapping turtle. Painted turtle. 
I think this is a map turtle of some sort. So lizards are terrestrial, they burrow, they can be aquatic. Um, there's one species that's aquatic. Uh, they have effective jaws, geckos, chameleons, and iguanas on the Galapagos iguana. Um, actually will dive down into the water and get vegetation. They eat. They're one of the few lizards that'll do that. But here's a chameleon. Um, I think this might be a gecko and an iguana. Snakes are legless lizards. Um, most are terrestrial, but they have some aquatic and some marine. Their eyes are covered by a permanent eyelid, so that's kind of one thing that makes them so creepy is they don't really blink. Um, there's no external ears, only one functional lung, um, and it's really like long and thin to fit inside that long body. They have flexible jaws, and some of them are venomous. So here are some. Ugh. Here's one eating a bull snake. No, this is a rattlesnake. Garter snake. Crocodiles and alligators have massive jaws. A diaphragm for breathing, so they're the first um, animals that have a diaphragm, which is just a, a wall of muscle underneath the lungs that help help for breathing. They uh, have a four-chambered heart, actually, so they're the first animals also that have a four-chambered heart, which again means there's no mixing of oxygen-rich and oxygen-poor blood. They make noises, and they also care for their young. They're good parents. So how, what's the difference between an alligator and a crocodile? Here you can see the teeth are mostly inside on, I don't remember if it's the top or the bottom part. I think it's the bottom jaw. Um, the teeth are inside on an alligator. Their snouts are longer and thinner, um, whereas the crocodile has teeth coming from both jaws. Tuataras are endangered. They're only found in New Zealand, so you maybe have never seen these before. They live in burrows, and they have what's the little third eye that detects light intensity, so it's um, just this little spot that has sensory tissue there that detects light. So some human impacts. Um, Five million people are bitten by snakes each year, poisonous snakes, but snakes have more of a benefit than a threat, and some don't have antivenoms. So some, especially in tropical um, regions, there's no antivenom for those. Um, we can use reptiles for medical research. Some lizards will actually lose their tails, um, but their tails regenerate. So we can study that. How does that process work? Um, could we do that if, let's say, I lose a finger? And um, could we use that same idea of how could we regenerate things? Um, again, they use toxins for pharmaceuticals and medications. So here are some different types of pharmaceuticals. Um, some reptiles are farmed, so they're bred for food, for their hides, or as pets. Um, there's a big pet market for different types of reptiles. They're hunted for food and eggs. Um, pet trade's not really that good. Um, if they're grabbed from, the, from nature, they often will die. Uh, there's, they have complex dietary needs and habitat needs that usually aren't met as a pet. And then there's also trade in reptile products like for fashion, jewelry, and medications. Um, and so a lot of these things um, actually harm your, harm the, the health of our reptile um, populations. So. That is it for reptiles. I hope you guys are doing good, and I will hopefully talk to you soon.